The ocean covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface and is home to more than 3 billion known species, making the ocean the largest ecosystem on the planet. But today, the low tide exposes one of the ocean's darker secrets. Due to sickness or injury, one can often find whales or wash up ashore. But today, I'm not searching for dead whales. Instead, I prefer to come after heavy storms and venture along the coastline during the low tides in hopes that I can save some stranded wildlife. But unfortunately, I don't always make it on time. So this right here is exactly one of the reasons why I come and check these washout points. The beautiful Pifeta Beta Sariedans. This beautiful snake was probably out in the tides trying to swim and probably got exhausted and washed up out here. It does happen. Pifeta's are known from swimming from one area to another. And unfortunately, she doesn't look like she made it. But that's exactly why I'm out here. Maybe something out here is exhausted, but he's still alive. And that means I have a chance of saving them. Unfortunately, I was too late for this goal, but it is a part of nature. The body will go back into the earth and future generations will still come around. Beautiful snake, but very sad. But despite being too late for the puffetter, I'm not ready to give up yet. And I continue my search. A brown shy shark. Trapped inside of a shallow tide pool due to the low tide has got me concerned. They are listed as vulnerable, and with the returning tide being a potential hazard to bashing the shark against the rocks or even pushing it to the high tide line where it may become stranded, I decided to step in. Alright, now I'm not sure if this guy is still alive. I really hope he is. Sometimes when the tide washes out, <laughs> these guys can be victims to it and he's a bit scratched up too. Hey, big guy. And he's still alive. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. I just want to take you to the deeper water. Just want to take you to the deeper water. They're a bit slippery. And I don't want to hurt him either. Once I can get underneath him, that's it. Take a look at that. It's stunning. All right, big guy. Come on. Come on. So I'm going to walk him over there. And hopefully we can actually get him somewhere safe. I'm a bit too worried about him being here by himself. Come on, big boy. Let's go. We got this. We got this. Little break. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's it, big guy. It's all up to you now. Woo! There he goes. I saw him go off that way. It's hard to see on the camera. But it looks like he finally made it. Woo! That was a bit of, bit of an interesting find. Definitely, whoa, not what I expected. But... He looks so... <laughs> I was a bit worried about him just sitting there. I'm scared he'll get stuck and trapped. Who knows, maybe he'll get ruffled around and whatnot. But I mean, it looks like he's gone off. The minute I put him in the water there, probably can't see with the camera, but he swam off pretty quickly, so I'm pretty happy with that. But that's a really cool find. Okay, so recently I posted a picture asking if I should make a video about finding chameleons. And the truth is, guys, it's very simple. The first thing you've got to do is empty your mind. You've got to be formless. You've got to become the chameleon. And you know what? Mmm, this is a good tree. I think we'll find one in here. A chameleon's camouflage is their secret weapon. It's what makes them so hard to find if you don't know what you're looking for. Alright, so I found a chameleon, but I don't know how to get to him. I'm surrounded by these thorns here, and he's quite deep in there. So this is going to make it pretty difficult, but I'm going to see if I can get close enough to take him out and show you guys. Oh, this is going to hurt. There you go, guys. I pretty much just bled to get this chameleon out of there. He was so deep in there and these thorns were no joke. They were an absolute pain to pull him out of there. But he is so beautiful. Let me put him in the sun here for you guys. You can see that this is the Eastern Cape Dwarf Chameleon, also known as the Southern Dwarf Chameleon. Quite a common species out here. And for those of you who love your scientific names, this is Bradypodium ventrail. What a cool little animal. Look at those eyes moving one by one in different directions, giving them that full field of vision. Super cool. 
But now what you may notice is that this guy still has five fingers just like you and me. And the thing is, three of them are fused to the front and two of them are fused to the other side, which makes it perfect for them to climb in these trees. And his one, his one eye is actually watching my lips as I'm talking. He's probably like, what's going on over there? Like, why is that thing moving so much on his face? I'm sorry, big guy. I promise you I'm not going to hurt you. And he is so beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely love these guys. Now, like I said, I did say I was going to teach you guys how to find these guys. And the fact that I found him in the bush is pretty much actually a fluke. No, I'm kidding. It's because I emptied my mind. I was formless. And I became the chameleon. <laughs> I'm just kidding but all jokes aside the best way to do it is to actually take a torch at night and what happens is these guys love to sit on the edges of the trees at night which makes it perfect for them to stand out and makes it much easier for you to go out there shine the torch and find them whereas during the day they're deeper in the bush makes it much more difficult to find them out there but that's it guys it's really not that difficult that's the way to find chameleons Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and even though it wasn't all that happy it still had a good ending and I really hope it has inspired you to try and make a difference in our wildlife.